Hello, everyone. It's Lori Staley, Addicted Stamper with Stampin' Up. And it is Tuesday night at eight o'clock, so it's time for our live event. And tonight we're going to be playing with the new release that just launched today for Stampin' Up, um, the Fitting Florets special release products. There's a whole collection of them that I'm going to share with you, and then we're going to do two fun folds with them. So hop on. Let me know you're here. I'm going to give you a couple beats to find me. And we'll do a little housekeeping and we'll get right into the projects. I've been gone um, more so for my Facebook page than here. I was here last week, but I've been away. So I missed a couple of my lives. I'm hoping you guys remember to come join me. I also know that there's a significant delay because I come in through Zoom and I am gonna, I'm gonna get that figured out here pretty soon so that I can eliminate that, that extra step. But let's talk a little bit about, hi Carol, hi Debbie. Good to see you guys. I got big shadows tonight. I'm trying to figure out why. <laughs> Cause nothing changed. That's what I love. Hi Janine, you be here? All right, you be here. <sighs> um, so yeah, so let's talk a little bit about uh, what's happening with Stampin' Up. Right now, it's Paper Pumpkin, right? The new Paper Pumpkin kit releases on the 11th. So if you are not a subscriber and you want to make sure you get this Paper Pumpkin, you need to either purchase the one month or subscribe by November 10th in order to get it. It is going to be Christmas tags and they will coordinate with the paper pumpkin from last month. If you remember, we did the um, paper pumpkin unboxing because it happened to come the same day I did my live. So I did a couple of, of alternates as well as showed you how to put the cards together that were in the kit. But this is going to have 12 um, easy to make tags. I uh, believe there's going to be a little bling there because this looks a little glittery to me or glimmery, if you will. And uh, there's also these awesome, and mine haven't come yet, or I'd show them to you, these awesome ho-ho-ho uh, bags. Uh, they're called the North Pole bags, and they are available only in the online store. So if you're looking for them, you're going to want to look in my online store. And again, they're called the North Pole bags. I think you get 10 in a package for like $4. So it's a really good deal. So you could do it as a little gift card holder and put the tag on it, or you could put some treats in it, whatever you want to do. Um, it does also come, this kit will also come with a cherry cobbler, classic stamping spot, and of course, all of the tools and die cuts and all those stamps that you'll need to create those tags. So again, the deadline to uh, sign up for that is November 10th. I have, it's a brand new month, right? It's November 1st. Hi, Verna. It's November 1st. So there's a brand new hostess code here for you. I point this out to you because... There's also a brand new Just Cards class. And of course, the way to get the card class for free, except for postage for long distance, is um, to place a minimum $30 product order on my website using the monthly hostess code. New, new class every month. You can also purchase the class out, outright for $15. And if you are long distance, the postage is, postage is just $4 to mail them to you. You get all the supplies to make the cards, all the embellishments, envelopes, a PDF, full color PDF is emailed to you. Any punching or die cutting that we can do in advance for you is done. You just need to supply your adhesives, your inks, and your stamps because we can't stamp for you, right? Uh, I say we because I have a friend that comes and cuts for me, so. But anyway, so this one is really cute. This is, I, I did two. I did this one and I did the New Year's card with the Celebrate Everything Hostess paper, the 12 by 12 pack of Hostess paper that's in the mini catalog. And if you don't have that paper yet, that's a really good one. You would place a $150 order or you have a $150 party, get together with a friend or two, and you can get that paper pack. Um, it's $18 Hostess dollars, and you get 15 with $150 party or order, so you would just pay $3 for 48 12 by 12 sheets that are double-sided. So those are two of the cards that we're going to be doing in this month's Just Cards. Then I have a masculine birthday card because we can never have enough masculine cards, right? And that's using the He's the Man designer series paper. And then I have a Christmas card, another Christmas card. I love, love, love this one. 
Um, just think that's so pretty. And guess what? That's also, no, that's not. That I think is out of Santa's Express paper. I originally was planning to do it with another pattern from the Celebrate Everything, but I changed it up. And then of course, uh, the brushed metallic gold foil. And look, there's a sneak peek of the upcoming product I'm gonna show you. That is the new gold embellishments that we have. Hey, Betty. Hi, Marilyn, good to see you. And then this one is a sneak peek because this is what we're gonna be playing with tonight. This is from the new Fitting Florets collection. Uh, this of course is not, this is the ribbon that is in the gnome collection, but it's balmy blue. So it works perfectly with our paper. And then this is the solid faceted, I think they're solid faceted gems, right? Um, but look at these ovals and look how they nest together. Isn't that cool? So these are the cards for this month for Just Cards. Again, you can earn them for free with a minimum $30 product purchase on my website using the host code. And please, please, please make sure to put that host code in. You have to enter the code in the box and you have to click the apply button. Um, that is the only way I can kind of see who's placed orders for the Just Cards class, right? So if you don't have that there, I might miss you and I don't want to do that. All right, let me show you the flyer and then let me pull the products in. So again, this release today, this is product that's going to be available in the January catalog, but they did an early release for us, which is always fun because it's always fun to get, you know, get your hands on the new toys as soon as possible, right? So it will be available kind of as a pre-release from now until January 4th. And then in January, the new mini catalog will be launching. There's a whole collection of products, which includes a stamp set, a die set, designer series paper, um, another, oh, um, I'm sorry, no, and an embellishment. And then in addition to that, there are, there is another stamp set. So let me pull the stamp sets and show them to you. I'm being distracted. My cat's over here playing right beside me, batting something around. So this is a Wild Supplies Last stamp set. Um, this is a bonus piece. It's not going to be available after January 4th, or it's only available while supplies last. So it might sell out long before January 4th, but it's a great Christmas one. It's called Framed and Festive. Um, you can see it's got a ton of Christmas greetings in there. Noel, fa la 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 la, tis the season to be jolly. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Uh, from all of us, Merry Christmas from our home to yours and may the season be filled with peace and joy. So fabulous set, I'm reaching for it a lot have been for the last month. Um, but again, it is not part of the bundle. It's a standalone stamp set. It is um, $23 for the stamp set. And then the stamp that is part of the bundle is the framed florette stamp. Okay. So you can see you've got lots of floral images, some greenery, and then again, a whole bunch of greetings. And if you watched my Facebook live, not this past Thursday, but I believe it was the Thursday prior, um, we did a sneak peek of this. Is that true? Or was it this past Thursday? No, it was this past Thursday. I was here this past Thursday. I wasn't here for Sunday night. I am on the road so much right now that I don't even know necessarily what town I'm in. Um, so that's the stamp set. This is the die set that bundles. Sure. Oh, there we go that bundles with those particular stamps and has all these fabulous ovals, right? So this one, when you cut it out, you get something that looks like this, okay? These are two separate pieces. So you can use them separately. You can cut two different colors if you want to, right? Um, these don't necessarily go together. It's just pieces I have laying here and you know, have a white inside the red, or maybe you are doing a patriotic card, you could do red, white, and blue, right? Um, so that's how that one cuts, and of course it layers. Then behind it, now these are all your dies to cut out your stamped images, as well as extra greenery pieces. Highly recommend adhesive sheets for those greenery pieces. Um, they're very detailed, very fine. And then there's two more ovals that also you can layer and play with. And this one on the inside does the same thing. It gives you two pieces when you cut it. This one has the little hash marks on it. And it also has another oval, a bit smaller, as you'll see here, let's lay it on the red so you can see the difference. So you can layer like that. 
which I think might be what I did. Nope, I used the outside edge um, on the just guards. So a couple different layering options here. This one, well, if I could pick it up, right? This one will also go over the larger one that was in the center of this piece. Um, and you actually have something to mat it to because it fits across the back there a little bit better. Then you have that option as well. And then, but wait, there's more. This piece that if you can't tell, those are tiny little hearts running the whole way around it. I didn't realize it didn't cut out. So I was just kind of wanting to cut it out of this piece of scrap paper I had and look what I did, <laughs> right? I've got all these cute little hearts. So this actually just cuts into the paper. It doesn't cut the oval out. But again, you can do lots and lots of layering inside that oval. Okay, so, and there's probably other layers that you can put together that I'm not showing you right now, just because I maybe haven't discovered them yet myself, but lots of fun to play with. And I think this is the very first set that I literally just took a bunch of cardstock and sat and cut pieces just to see what I could do with it. So there we go. That is the die set that coordinates with the frame florets stamp set that's your bundle so if you're just looking interested into the bundle that's what you want to grab you'll get those two pieces uh if you get the whole collection okay so the bundle itself is 55 54 that's with the 10 percent discount and then the fitting florets collection is 97.50 and you get everything so you get that stamp and die you get this stamp you get these beautiful gold blings they are called gold adhesive backed swirls. And they really do have a beautiful pinwheel swirl right embossed into the front of them. So, or molded into the front of them maybe. Um, so they're really pretty. And we needed something else gold because I love the festive pearls or the red and green pearls, depending on where you're looking. They have two different names, um, but we don't get a lot of all, all one color. And I burned through the gold ones like, goodness craziness. And then you also in the collection can get the beautiful designer series paper. If you're buying things separately, the gold swirls that I just showed you, those are 850. Of course, the designer paper is 12. Now this, 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 and this are only available while supplies last. So if you are interested in it, guys, you want to grab it. I don't know how much inventory we have. I have a class, a big holiday gift giving stamp camp planned at the end of the month. Put some stuff on my order, went to close my order today and some of the stuff I need for the camp is gone. And it's not even while supplies last, it's actual product that we offer. So I can't promise you if you wait, if it will be available or not. But let me show you the different designs in this paper. And I think I have a whole. So this one, this particular pattern right here, the one with the two flowers on it, that you can actually cut out with one of the dies. So if you're not somebody that enjoys coloring, we've got you covered, right? Um, this one's great. You can color in those berries, which we're actually gonna do on one of our cards tonight. And then we have the Blushing Bride, more neutral pattern, I call it. Carrying those same colors. It's, pol it's Polished Pink, Blushing Bride, Balmy Blue, Soft, succulent, evening evergreen, and I think it's crushed curry. Yes, crushed curry and night of navy. So those are the colors in the paper. That's a little electric, isn't it? Here's another one that I think is just so beautifully electric. And I just, I guess I never really realized putting balmy blue on night of navy and just adding that pop of polished pink, how vibrant that is. And then on this side, we have polished pink. I know there's, I might not have all six patterns here because I have burnt through quite a bit of this card stock. Um, here's one with just the balmy blue and the evening evergreen. And then this fun little uh, plaid or checked pattern on the back. Yep, I don't, those are the only four patterns I have. No, I did, have, did I have all five? I didn't have all six, I just had five. So the sixth one is a mystery. I can't even tell you what it is off the top of my head, but they're beautiful. And if you like florals and you like pinks and blues, these are for you. Okay, 
let's make some cards. What do you say? So I have two, as I mentioned, two fun folds for you. And the first, and these are easy fun folds and you've probably seen me do these before. The first one is a easel card, but we're gonna do a frame. Okay, we're gonna do a frame and we're gonna tone down that eclectic. So if you're electric. So if you're not somebody that likes the bright colors, but I think that's very pretty muted, right? And all I did to mute it was I put a layer of vellum on there. We are bringing in for the inside reading because this one and this one come from the stamp set that is in the collection, the frames, frame florets. But this greeting comes from Pansy Patch. Wishing you a little extra happiness just because you're you. And I'm also bringing in the deckled rectangles. And we're going to just take a regular piece of Knight of Navy cardstock and cut our, oops, too big, cut our center out to get our frame. Okay, and I will have all the measurements, uh, give me 15, 20 minutes after we're off and I'll have all the measurements below the video for you. Is it, which one is it, Debbie? Can you describe it to me? Maybe it'll pop in my head. It must've been my favorite too, because <laughs> I've used it. Was it this one actually? on this card. I think it might have been. I can't see what's on the back of it, but I think it was this one, wasn't it? And yes, I because I used this one at my team meeting. I had a big team meeting uh, at the end of October. So that is why it's missing. Yep. All right. And then we're also, but I have to grab them because I did not grab them. We are also gonna be using uh, stylish shapes to get the squares in the center here. So I'm just gonna center this on a piece of Knight of Navy. I'm gonna grab my post-it note tape so that I'm sure it doesn't move on me as I take it through the die cutting machine. And I'm gonna eyeball it if that makes you crazy, be, by all means measure it, but I'm, I'm gonna be brave and just eyeball it. All right, I'm gonna run that through. So on the, on the embossed die cutting machine, you're gonna do platform, plate two, cutting pad, cardstock with your die, uh -huh. and another cutting pad. And you can tell my cutting pads are very well loved. That DP, DSP is beautiful. I can't talk tonight. I spent three days working on my mother's house again to get it cleaned out. We thought we were gonna get done this weekend. We did not. We're so close though. Um, then we came home last night and, oh my gosh, I unpacked a ton of stuff and we did a load of laundry and I came to my studio and I ended up designing some cards and it was like my husband went to bed and I was still up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to have a cup of hot chocolate and then I'm going to go to bed. Well, the hot chocolate knocked me out in my chair. <laughs> so I did not go to bed. Well, I never went to bed, to be honest with you. <laughs> so I think when I'm off my live tonight and cleaned up and get everything posted, I'm, I might have to go to sleep. <laughs> All right. So this is just our regular cardstock weight vellum. We used to have two weights of vellum and the other one was very thin. I actually prefer this um, because not only can we use it just in la as layers, et cetera, on card making, but you can use it when you're forming boxes and you can score it. And I do, I do like that. The trick with vellum is to put your adhesive where it won't be seen. So I'm gonna put it right here in the center because when I cut these squares out, no one's ever gonna see it, right? And then of course, I'm going to have my frame over top the edges. So if you really wanted to, you could, but there's not really a reason to because this is gonna help hold everything in place. And then the squares will hide that. So you can see how that shows through the vellum. Let me grab those dies real quick.
what happens when you try to be doing three things at one time when you're putting your project kits together. It doesn't go so well. So these are the stylish shape dies. I, I just love these because we've got our squares back. We've got our um, circles with the stitching and then of course our banners. They're fraternizing with the squares there, circle. Um, <laughs> and we've got multiple, I mean, there's five, five squares and six circles, I think, and four banners. So we've got lots of options. Now that I could keep this piece because it's a nice deckled edge, but right now I don't have a plan for it. So I am going to cut out my square from the center of that rather than cut into another piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna grab a piece of polished pink because both of these items will fit right on the die cutting machine together and I can roll them through on one cut, one pass, if you will. Always looking for ways to save time, right? By the way, for those of you that live local to me, I am doing a Christmas card class at the Hillsburg Library next Monday night, 6.30. And we're gonna be making two Christmas cards. Um, so if you're around and you wanna sign up for that, that would be awesome. I would love to see you. I think a lot of you are long distance from me though. But I'm gonna see several of you on Saturday. That's gonna be fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this frame mounted. And I'm gonna use the adhesive, adhesive foam adhesive strips. This is a product I think we overlook in the catalog, or maybe we're just not sure how we can employ it. Well, with the fabulous frames, um, the fancy frames, even doing something like this, just with regular cardstock and a rectangular frame, these strips are perfect because I wanted the depth and you can see, and I wanted it to be nice and secure and, and you know, not dip down anywhere for our easel. So you get two sheets in the package and I'm not really sure how many strips come on a sheet. Does it tell me that? 40. So there's 20 on each sheet. And I'm just running them. And then I'm going to grab my scissors. I can nip that right there. And then I'll bring this one over. This is also what I recommend when you want to do shaker cards, right? Because you can completely seal your space by just butting these up against each other. Now I'm not worried about butting them up tonight because we're not doing a shaker card, um, but that's about how I would do it. It's butted up against that edge and it's butted up against that edge. And then I just put the excess back on the sheet and it's ready for the next project. So I do love these. And when I remember to use them, I go through them quite quickly, believe it or not. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mount this. Anybody use the adhesive strips? I should be using my take your pick tool to take this off. And then I can just bring this down here. And just like that, I have my frame. Then we're gonna put our pink in here. And as you can see, it's gonna cover up our adhesive and then we'll have our layer there. So this is gonna just go on with regular dimensionals. I mean, you have the adhesive strips out, you could absolutely use those to do this as well but I prefer to use just regular dimensionals and save my adhesive strips for things like the frames or the shaker cards. Okay. 
Okay. Then we're going to do some heat embossing. I'm going to show you a trick that you may or may or not already know. So I'm going to get my embossing buddy. Took me a lot of years to remember to use the embossing buddy every time. It's kind of like the, uh, the adhesive sheets, not the adhesive strips. Although I seem to have a problem with remembering either one of those, don't I? And I've got a Versamark pad, which is well loved, as you can see. And the wishes for a beautiful birthday come right from the stamp set from this collection. Work that up well. I'm going to stamp that, make sure I'm on the right side. I am. Not that I wouldn't turn it over if I needed to, because I absolutely would. I am not beyond that. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, so you guys do have them good. And some of you are like me and you can't remember to use them. <laughs> And when I use them, I'm like, well, this makes this so simple. Why don't I do this all the time, right? Mm -hmm. White embossing powder. Although every time I use my white embossing powder, I say it might be time to invest in a new white embossing powder because mine is very, very, um, has a lot of additives in it, if you will. <laughs> There's black in it and silver. All right, so now I'm going to grab my heat tool. And I don't know. I know what it does over on Facebook when I heat emboss. I'm not sure what it's going to do here. Um, so I will apologize in advance if it gets noisy for you. I'm going to set this out of the way so I don't end up blowing all the embossing powder everywhere. And I'm going to grab my clothespin so that I try not to burn my fingers, right? <laughs> I hold my heat tool in the same spot until I start to see the powder melt. I don't do this right away. Because um, it takes a bit for the gun to heat up and you can see it is now. So now I'll just start moving it across the letters. And white is one of those that it's so easy to tell when it's set. And you don't want to keep the heat on it after it's fully set because then it will start to melt down into the paper and you will lose the um, lose the impact of the raised image. Okay. So I know, I know you're thinking, now wait a minute, you did that in white. I did. And some of you probably know what I'm going to do. We don't have polished pink embossing powder. And truthfully, even if I had stamped it in the Versamark and then stamped it into the polished pink, it would look very nice on the Knight of Navy. Oh no, don't get them on your sweater. <laughs> so I have the dark polished pink blend. And I'm gonna use the brush tip. And I am going to take it over the white embossing powder. You guys know this trick? Because there is the trick, like I said, about stamp in Versamark, stamp in the ink pad, and then stamp onto your cardstock. And that way you can use clear embossing powder, but you will have the color of the stamp pad that you chose showing as your embossed color, right? Because the powder's clear. And that's great for light colored cardstock. Like on white, that's a fabulous trick, but it doesn't work necessarily on dark colored cardstock. So I'm just going over every letter. I choose to use the bullet tip. I just feel like I have better control 
It's definitely not as thin as that brush tip is. So if you are somebody that's more comfortable with the brush, brush tip, yes, you can do it with the brush tip as well. But I'm more comfortable with the bullet tip. And my bullet tips run dry much faster than my brush tips because of that. So then I'm forced sometimes to go use the brush tip. And don't forget your dots above your eyes. Or the cross on your T. So because we put the white embossing powder down and we're taking the color over it, the color isn't seeping into the dark cardstock, which dulls it, right? It's laying on top of the embossed powder. So it's almost as if we stamped that color onto white cardstock. Is that new for anybody or did you all know that? Oh, good. Debbie knows it now. Awesome. Okay, well there, good. I always like it when I can teach you one new thing. So now this, okay, so now everybody's going, well, rub your finger over it. Okay, nothing's coming off. So it does, it's an alcohol marker, it dries immediately, right? So that is a great way. And if you see like when I'm done, I go back and I just double check myself and I can see like here, I probably can add just a little bit more on some edges. Yeah, I love doing this because again, you get, you can get that impact on the darker cardstock. I think that looks good. Okay, so that was where I had to find my tape again. Put that right there. This is a little bit crooked. Let's see if I can get it up. Twist it just a hair. Yeah, that looks better. So there is our card front. Now we're going to create our easel in our inside. Um, the only thing about the stamp pad is it's a water-based ink and I don't know if it would dry, Debbie. I don't know if it would dry. The alcohol markers I know work well. Um, I, I used to do it before we had the alcohol markers. I did do it with regular uh, markers and if I recall correctly, it did work. So it might, but boy, you're going to have to have a light hand because I mean, it's, it is embossed, but it's not raised that much um, that you might not end up getting it onto the cardstock. And depending on what color it is, it might just blend right into the cardstock and you'd never see it, but it might not. So I always say, test it, test it and report back. Let me know. <laughs> All right, so I mounted that on to a four and a quarter by five and a half, half piece of cardstock. Here is our base. It's a four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half, and then scored at two and three quarters. And I'm just going to crease that. Now, here's the trick with easel cards. And I tell folks this whenever we're making them in class all the time and someone always does it anyway when you create your easel card you're only putting adhesive on the bottom portion don't put your adhesive all over your card front like we tend to do when we're making a regular card right and you can go edge to edge because with this card because i make the panel the full card front so I'm just going to line that up down here at the bottom edge and on the sides. And 
and then give it a good rub. And then it will stand up and it will still, because we put that panel, that pink panel on it, it will still have the pink border going around it. I did pre-cut and stamp the Celebrate. That Celebrate comes from, and I couldn't decide if I wanted the pink or the blue, but I think I decided on the pink side. And that comes right out of the same stamp set. We're gonna grab our last greeting here. And that I'm gonna do a Night of Navy. And again, the wishing you a little extra happiness just because you're you comes from Pansy Patch. Grab a dimensional or two. And then see where I want, how, how tall do I want my easel? And I think I want it right about there. So I'm gonna center this under my greeting and you can keep it lower. Um, I can sign in there. And then if I wanna write a message, I can write it lower down, but there we go. Now we got one last thing and that's our bling. We gotta have a little bit of bling, right? Yeah, I really like that. <laughs> hey, I didn't call you out, Janine. <laughs> you just outed yourself, my friend. <laughs> Janine lives very close to me and she's a very good friend. All right, so these go with the blue ribbon I was talking about earlier from the Gnome Suite. And I thought, okay, let's add a little bit of bling with these. So I used one of the big ones and I kind of centered it on the frame and on the square. At least that was my goal. We'll pretend I centered it. How's that? And then I took and I added the small ones. So we had, so I'm breaking my rule because I always say odd numbers, right? But in this particular case, we're doing threes in two locations. So it's kind of odd, but not completely. And this is someone you really, really like because we've got lots of layers, we've got a fun fold, and now we've given them six blink. That's somebody you really like, right? <laughs> <laughs> But I thought it helped to pull the blue out from the muted pattern in the back behind the vellum by adding those. So what do you think? I think that's fun. Okay. So now we're gonna do another one. But I'm gonna find my desk for one quick second here because right now it's completely gone. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can do with the next one. The next one's a Christmas card, because I do really love that uh, Festive and Framed, I think it's called, right? That stamp set. And I've seen lots of people coloring the berries. I hadn't seen anyone color the check. So I thought, I'm gonna give that a try. Um, so I did all the white check, I turned red with the light real red blend. And then I did a strip across the bottom on the inside as well. This is a book binding card. This is one of my favorite go-to quick, easy, fun fold. Um, just gives it a little bit more wow. And sometimes it's nice, and I know it's crazy because we're probably only talking, I think this is an inch or maybe an inch and a quarter that I put the fold on this time. Um, but it was just nicer to have a smaller section to work with.
Okay, so. This I did pre-cut, but I don't think I did the white one, which is kind of crazy. So we'll have to cut the white one. And we've got our card base, which is soft succulent. And I did do the score and I'll have the score where I scored that at in the measurements below when we're done here as well. Um, got the red strip. This is real red again. And initially I thought, okay, well maybe we'll just do this, but I didn't like that. So I had to put that layer of white behind there. And I just realized that my strip for the inside is going to be too short, but that's okay. I said, I just said I needed the white and then I went to matter without the white. All right. So that is our panel for the binding portion of our card. And then I have a red square, our white square, and our designer series paper. And something tells me that I need my cutter. <laughs> I'm always amazed. Let's see. Yeah, this is the piece for the inside, I think. That is just a random piece. That's the piece for the inside. All right, so we've got the inside. We're gonna go ahead and color this. And then I'm gonna grab a piece of white. And if I don't have one, yep, I do, I have one right here. So let's go ahead and color our berries. Now I did use the light real red blend. You could use whatever blend you want. The tip I'm gonna share with you is give yourself just a little bit of a gap between where you're coloring and the edge of the image. And why do I say that? Because if you go tight up to the edge, the blend bleeds, okay? It kind of settles in and then it goes beyond where you want it to go. So it goes outside the line. And if you're fine with that, no worries. And some of mine do, especially on the, uh, checked pattern, some of mine bled out. And sometimes I tried to make it happen and sometimes I tried not to make it happen. But on the berries, I kind of wanted to keep it inside as best I could, so. I just think this is so pretty. Perfect for Christmas. And the white berries are pretty for Christmas as well. And now that I'm looking at this, I'm wondering if I might have, on the original card, I might have used the Poppy Parade because this seems to be a little darker or it could just be my lighting or my eyes tonight. <laughs> But I know the cardstock's real red. Almost there. I could have picked a piece with less berries, huh? 
or I could have done them in advance. But I wanted to remember to tell you that about staying just a little bit inside the edge. And you can see it filled. There's no white showing on there. So the ink does bleed and fill. <laughs> the gingham ribbons out of, is it really? Well, well, that's a bummer. Well, this is actually the gingham paper that I used. That's the word I wanted too. Thank you, gingham, Debbie. Um, this is one of the patterns in that pack. All right, let's see if I can cut this to what I need. And I should be able to. It's just an eighth of an inch smaller than this. So that's gonna be four and an eighth by three and seven eighths. There we go. Okay. I actually thought this was kind of interesting art too. Just the back. <laughs> Just add some berries on the back too, right? It's crazy. So these are just layers and here's a great opportunity to use the white to cut your oval. Except that I think the oval we're gonna use is inside one of the larger dies. Is how we're going to get to it, so it probably wouldn't have worked for us. I think that's the way I want it to go. But I think the white makes it pop. What do you guys think? Now, before I mount that, we're going to add our ribbon. And I'm gonna do that about halfway. This is the Real Red and Garden Green Combo Pack ribbon. It's a very nice ribbon. But you know what, Debbie, going back to that gingham ribbon, you could absolutely do that same thing on the gingham ribbon. ribbon. And I have done that. I've colored the gingham ribbon as well. Now let's just cover those tails so they don't decide to come up when your recipient receives their card. Okay. We're not wrapping anything around in the fold, so we can go ahead and seal the inside of this. And again, you do want a strong adhesive. I, I work well with the regular seal. Some people like the seal plus for things that they wanna make sure stay sealed or closed. Um, your Tombow liquid glue works great. Okay, what did we do on the inside? Tis the season to be jolly. And we did that in real red. We'll go ahead and finish the inside as best we can. I might go up and down on this one. It might fit better. Make sure I have the orientation right before I stamp it. I know none of you have ever done that, right? You're making a card in the horizontal orientation and you stamp it in the vertical orientation. So we're just gonna put that, do I wanna put it on the side or do I wanna center it on the bottom? I think we'll center it on the bottom. So it is a little short. I'm just gonna leave a little bit of a white border at the bottom edge too. All right, so now let's do our white oval. And I'll put the dies up here so they'd be at my fingertips. You like it on the bottom? Good, 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 good. So I've got the centerpiece and that 
was definitely, this red one was definitely cut from this design. The reason I know is there's these little edges, right? And you can see maybe on there that those little edges are into the cardstock. One thing I do wanna mention about this particular die, um, and only because I did use it in my team be meeting and we just used it. Um, my girlfriend just cut a bunch of stuff out with it for me. Make sure you are cleaning out these little holes on this die as you go. Um, because if you cut a lot of layers and you aren't cleaning them out necessarily, let me tell you what a bear some of them are to get it out. I sat today and picked at this thing because these tiny little circles in between some of the dashes um, just did not want to let that paper go. So I always say, make sure when you do it that you are getting, taking good care of your dyes so that they last you for a long time. And uh, part of that is getting your paper out before you just keep rolling it and rolling it and impacting the cardstock into those. Plus you won't get a good die cut. It will stop cutting in detail. And then you'll be like, I don't understand why this die doesn't work. <laughs> At least that's what I would say. So just a maintenance tip, right? Okay, We are going to use some soft succulent and stamp our mm -hmm. may you have have yourself a merry little christmas I'm using my grid paper to hope that my oval is somewhat straight and keep that towards the top so i can get the holly and the berries in the holly and the berries Come from a set that I absolutely love. Um, it's one of the first sets I got and I've used it quite a bit. And it is Handmade Wishes. It actually coordinates with a punch in the mini catalog. And I didn't necessarily get it for the words. As a matter of fact, I've used a couple of the words, but not many of the words. I got it for this image to go around the punch. And I got it for these tiny little images, these tiny little Christmas images. There are so many different ways that you can use those little images. And we don't have um, a lot of small images this year. So I love that set, but I don't love a photopolymer when it is well loved and doesn't want to stick to the block like right now. Okay. So the trick, if you have that happen to you, the trick to get the photopolymer to stick is to make the back of it wet. To clean your blocks first, first and foremost, clean your blocks. I know that we did just clean all our all my blocks. So for me, it is, I've got to make that back of that stamp a little bit damp so it will stick to the block. So yeah, I am very convinced that perhaps I used Poppy Parade, not only to color the berries, but to do the holly berries too, because these are much darker than, than mine. And I, had, I do write notes and put them on the backs of my cards because I'm designing in advance, but this one, the note fell off of. So I was thinking I knew what I was doing tonight. That goes in the center of our oval. I'm so happy that we have ovals back again. I like ovals and I've missed them terribly. I'm gonna add this on here with some dimensionals as well. Four dimensional scraps. Oh, there's a couple on here yet. And keep that over here on the right side. And then I have one piece of bling. And I just realized I didn't use the beautiful gold swirls tonight. I do love them. I 
These are the uh, 2123 in color opal rounds. And I'm gonna grab one of the large evening evergreen and put that right at the top of the oval. And there is our book binding card. See how cute the little holly is there with those small stamps. All right, so that's project number two. So there are our two projects that we did tonight with the little fun folds, the simple fun folds, right? The easel, an easy one. And so is the book binding card. Um, and here's the, so that one I think is real red. And this one is definitely poppy, poppy parade. I think they're both pretty. This one is a little deeper, a little richer, if you will. Um, I hope you like that guys. By the way, I forgot to announce who won the cards from last week. So yes, please make sure you are commenting, you are liking, you are giving me a thumbs up sharing the video. If you're not a subscriber, I would love it if you would subscribe. Um, but last week we did the soft seedling, right? With the watercolor techniques. So there's the cards we did last week. And the winner of those is Donna Beers. And Donna, I don't think I saw you hop on tonight, um, but I will bring these with me because I'm going to get to meet you on Saturday. I'm so excited. And get to see Betty and Jerry and Verna, and we're gonna have fun. I'm not sure who else is gonna be there, but um, I'm hoping to know before I leave here. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching and hanging out with me tonight. It's always fun to spend time with you and be crafty. I hope you enjoyed the projects tonight and uh, give this product collection a serious look because there's so many different things that you can do with it. Uh, don't be surprised if there's not a class very near future using this collection. And until next Tuesday, if you want to check me out Thursday for coffee and cards, I'll be on my Facebook page at 10 a.m. And uh, at this point, I am planning to be back in plenty of time on Sunday to be able to do my Sunday Night Live as well over there at eight. So hopefully I will see you there. Be safe, take care, and have a good rest of your week. Thanks for watching. Bye.